time I'd like to bring my man, man, Cedric, to the stage. But Cedric, that opened up for people like Mike Epps, Steve Harvey, and some other guy. <laughs> I never heard of it, but we, we won't worry about that. <laughs> but I'd like to bring him to the stage, y'all. He's going to be very funny, funny to me. So let's give it up for Cedric. Cedric, where you at? I guess he got scared, huh? What y'all do? Oh, boy, side piece out there in the, in the audience. I got that city trend, pimp ass suit on. We ain't going to come up here and mess up my introduction. First of all, it's too damn hot for one thing for us to be out here messing up anything. Edison, South Carolina, how y'all doing today? First of all, I'm going to walk on stage and introduce my goddamn self because that was disrespectful. And I don't do my elders like that, so I ain't going to talk about this old ass no more. So I'm going to back up. Act like y'all ain't seen me yet. DJ, give me something funky, man. Coming to the stage at this time, introduce his own self. You might have seen his brother at Family Dollar. You might have seen him in Rugged Warehouse. You might have seen him in Marshalls, TJ Maxx, or Burlington's by discount clothing. Give it up for the one and only. I work for Augusta, Georgia. Comedian Sassandra! South Carolina. Cut the music, DJ. Make some noise for everybody else y'all seen up here tonight. I had a tough act to follow. We had a black band dressed up like they was on the love boat. Y'all seen them with them long ass shirts on out here burning the hell up. Give it up for them. I like the nigga on the Congo that kept just running around, hugging all other people, running off stage and coming back. That was beautiful. Then y'all had Suge Knight singing R&B music over here. Time I let him get his eat on. That's so mannish and nasty. How many of y'all want to get y'all eat on? Oh shit, they got me this little man hotel around the corner. I'm in room two. I'm just playing. I knew we was in trouble when they gave me a real key for the room, like a regular key. What kind of shit is this, man? And y'all giving up all the old ass hosts they got in here. Every host they got on the show is over 70 years old. Who hired these niggas? AARP? What is this? Let's get some young people on the microphone know what they're doing. Because I was about to kick them two old niggas off by themselves. Don't put them back up here no more. And then we had my man coming here with that, uh, that Hamrick's outfit on, messing up my introduction. But thank you, brother. I don't disrespect my elders. But I will knock that cane out from under your ass later on. Make your ass trip. Are y'all ready to have a good time tonight, Anderson? Somebody make some noise. Anderson, South Carolina, I'm a music lover to my heart. I love old school R&B. Who love old school R&B like I do? I ain't talking about that regular old. I'm talking about that real old school. I'm talking about some Marvin Gaye, yeah. some Luther Vandross, yeah. a little Anita, a definitely set the party all right. I'm talking about old as this nigga with this red hat on. That's the kind of R&B I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. He got that. <laughs> You all right with me? I seen that same shirt in City Trends for four dollars. I let it go, and you went behind me and picked. Oh, I like that right there. That looks nice. Y'all love that old school music, man. Where we used to understand the words the rappers were saying, where the rappers could rap and the singers could sing. Now they don't have to do that no more, do they? I was riding around listening to the Migos one day. I don't know why I did that. They had a song called Stir Fry. It sounded good and bad at the same time. It confused me. It came on, they weren't even saying no word. Oh, super, yeah, we'll dance for my dogs in the nighttime. Yeah, nigga, but the ticket like pop pop. I'm depending because I ain't trying to buy. In the kitchen, wrist twisted like a surf fry. Then some dude that couldn't hear that night for. Oh, so man, I'm on a celebrity rap, but dance for my dogs in the nighttime. See, I was confused. 
because I'm used to that good old school music like we used to listen to back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I listen to the same old school rap songs that I listen to back in the day. I was 42 years old when I was working at a call center. I was going through bad stuff in my life. My son friend was my supervisor. This nigga 22. He was my supervisor. Somebody spent the night in my house. I gave this nigga a pair of shoes when his parents got divorced because he was in hard times. But he's my supervisor. Everything going good for him. He got a late model Kia. He riding around and, you know, got George's polo on, everything good. Little chicks hollering at him. He's straight. I'm mad trying to figure out how I'm going to pay all my bills out of $10 an hour. I'm robbed Peter to pay Paul so many times. Peter was like, God damn, bro. <laughs> Y'all know how I get sometimes? My supervisor, my 22 year old supervisor, came up to me and said, Hey, I know you've been clocking in a little bit late. If you clock in late again, I'm going to have to write you up. Same dude just spent the night in my house and ate my food. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was disrespectful. So it took me back to the very same rap song I came up on. You know what I'm saying? I looked at him and I said, Don't push me, because I'm close to the. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> It's like a jungle sometimes that makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Yeah. Classic rap lyrics, that's what I'm talking about. But I'm an old school R&B. Heart to my head, man. I love R&B music to death. You know what I'm saying? The real R&B. I ain't talking about that bullshit with the auto-tunes and all that stuff. I'm talking about real singers. Say, how many of y'all remember a dude named Jeffrey Osborne? Yeah! Come on now. Anderson, South Carolina, man. Say one more time. How many of y'all remember Jeffrey Osborne? Yeah! Jeffrey Osborne was a bad boy, a real saint. Yeah. Jeffrey would put that thing out there and tell you something you don't understand. And you don't question it because the brother could sing. Can anybody tell me what woo 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 is? Can anybody tell me what woo 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 is? Anybody, anybody right here? Anybody over there? Anybody over there? Anybody over there? Anybody, anybody with the messed up team? Anybody back over there? Anybody can ask me woo? Can nobody tell me? Because he made it up. But when he hit that one part of the song, though, y'all was on it. I can't go on. Can you woo woo woo? Oh, that's not Jack. Can you woo woo woo? Can you woo? No, Jeffrey, I can't because I don't know what that is. <laughs> Jeffrey was a bad boy. He sung a song called Stranger that didn't make no damn sense. But the brother was such a good singer. He said, Last night I loved a stranger like the beginning of a fantasy. Now, was it right? To love a stranger, uh, cause then nobody to care after me. Then the nigga ran out of words. Who na 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 na? Nobody who na 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 na. It was real. Single that could sing. I love single that could sing. That's why I rock with my boy Anthony Hamilton so hard. Anthony Hamilton take you back to the cotton field, make you want to pick okra and cotton, don't he? Yes. Jeffrey, I mean, oh, I, that boy tell you some of the simplest stuff in the world, don't he? He had a song called We Cool. I was so glad when they got to the chorus, because I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. We don't have to worry about no movie. We can build up on that loan. We don't have to go to the movie. We can just sit at home, have a little foreplay, baby. Whatever turns you on, if you're, then I, then we're, oh no, 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 what are you talking about? I love that old school singing, man, that's what I'm talking about, that's what I was born on, I was raised on that old school singing. Y'all remember mama them play that Silent Gold Sunday, they turn on that before I let go the whole house, be clean in 15 minutes, mama be to cook the whole meal for everybody, that's right, just like Jesus, she ain't have a, you know, Two fishes in a loaf, and everybody in the family came over me. I'm in Big Mama's house. Oh, yeah, that got that cornbread from scratch. Sucking up that pop lick off them collard greens. <laughs> oh, I smell the diabetes in this bitch right now. Diabetes and stretch marks all through this place. I know y'all know what I'm talking about, eating fried chicken and smothered fried pork chops. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I come up from the South. I was raised by old school black people. How many of y'all raised by old school black people? I'm looking across this room. Some of y'all are old school black people. Some of y'all so damn old. Y'all remember when television used to go off? When the TV went off, it had them columns on it, and then it said, Doo. That's what Lenny Williams was talking about. He said, I watched television. The television went off. Young kids don't understand that because nothing goes off now. You know what I'm saying? They That's keep right. everything going. That's what's messing this whole generation up. 
kids lazy as hell. They lazy on, they own, they work for damn, but they fuck right. strong as hell, but they play video games and text all the time. We right. did old school stuff. We went outside. We didn't have no elaborate electronic toys. Your hand had that a basketball. You guys might have had a baseball or a softball. And everybody had that dog, that ball from Dollar Tree or Dollar General with that stem on it that you never could pump the ball up with. Y'all remember that little cheap ass ball? Everybody had a ball like that. We played, we went outside. How many of y'all got kids? How many got kids? Yeah, I'm not proud of my kids either. It's all right. They make me sick. Because these kids now think they're supposed to have stuff they ain't supposed to have. I tried to be a good parent back in the day, but I gave that shit up. It didn't work. I spent $1,300 on that at Walmart after I got my income tax. They want a PlayStation phone going, ball man! Got them everything. Games, controllers, everything. You think them bastards let me win when I play with them? They beat my ass like a slave when I play that game. Cause see, I'm looking across this place now cause see, y'all look like me. We got started the same way playing video games. Now they got something called a controller. A controller got buttons on the top, front, back, side, the side, and the middle. That's a little bit too much for me. I'm right-handed. I can't do all that. You understand what I'm saying? I came up in an era where the shit was simple. Nigga, we had a joystick. It was a flat black panel with a button on the right-hand side. Y'all remember that? How many of y'all start off on that Atari 2600? Come on now. Yes, sir. I see the varicose veins in the middle of your forehead now. I see where the receiving hairlines and the edge is gone. I know y'all just like me in here. How many of y'all thought Pac-Man was going to move faster when we lean with it? That's how we used to do it back then. That's how we got started. And my favorite game of all time was that regular Nintendo. You ever play the regular Nintendo? Mario Brothers, you get the World 5, you jump on that one black thing a hundred times, you get a hundred men to go back and beat the game. Y'all remember that? What happened when that Nintendo got hot? That little green, the green screen started blinking, and the red light started blinking on that Nintendo. Everybody did the same thing. Y'all took that car, just turn this bitch sideways. And you chucked it back in there. That was about an extra three hours of game time, wasn't it? I got three boys. I got three boys. I'm so happy when they do anything with their hygiene. My son came in and said, Daddy, I need some deodorant. So like any other responsible parent, I go to Walmart four times a week. I said, son, ride with me to Walmart. We're going to get you some deodorant. This dude, when he picked out some degree and a perspiration, I was proud of him. Even got a two-pack. Until I looked at the price of the two-pack. The two-pack was $8.88. Who the hell you think could pay $9 for two cents deodorant? Then I thought back to my very first experience with deodorant. Everybody had that same experience. I'm looking at y'all. Y'all looking at me. I know what y'all think. Yeah, you came in the house sometime between six and nine years old and you didn't smell like outdoors no more. Your ass was musty. <laughs> and your mama who loved you dearly, she looked at you and she said, uh-uh, go upstairs, take a bath. So you came out the bathtub. She was waiting on you with a magic jar that was gonna change your life for the rest of your life. It was white, navy blue leathers on it. You had a light blue top, navy blue top, red top, or the baby blue top. How many of y'all remember that word? You look on the front, you see the letters T-U-S-S-Y. How many of y'all started out with that Tussie? Cream deodorant. And the first time you got on the Tussie, you couldn't just, you couldn't just wear the Tussie, put the Tussie on. You had to hit the Tussie. You remember you had to hit the Tussie. You put the Tussie on, you had to hold your arm on top of it. Tussie burned for a second, then it started tingling, and it felt real good. Your skin was acclimated. It was used to the Tussie. You had coming. Did you hit that Tussie, man? I know you hit that touch. You like you hit that touch hard. Do you hit that touch like hey, 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 you hit that touch like that? You got an animal print. I know you hit that touch hard. You wasn't playing no games with it. That one job touch it lasted you for six years, didn't it? That same one until you got to high school. That one job for eighty cent. Now, the other lasts you about a month when you get it now. And you can tell who's wearing the tussy too. Some people are too old to wear the tussy. They already had hit other deodorants. And you'll see it when they be in recess when they playing and they had them uh, school uniforms on, them red, navy, blue shirt. They lift their arm up, you see that white streak going out. Oh, you got them tussy. You got them tussy. That's how we used to do it, man. Love it, man. Love it, love it. June 25th, my favorite singer of all time. We celebrate the memorial of his death. Y'all give it up for Michael Joseph Jackson. Please give it up for Michael Joseph Jackson. This dude's dead. They still raking his name through the mud. That's terrible, man. They said Michael Jackson messed with little kids. 
but I know he didn't mess with the kids. Because they said Michael Jackson was giving the kids wine coolers. Michael Jackson was 50 years old at the time of his death, meaning he was raised by some real old school players. Old school players only hand out brown liquor. Your dirty ass uncle with 14 kids by 15 different women never called you to the side with a flask full of booms for him when your mama wasn't around. He gave you some Hennessy, some Cavassier, some shit to put something on your chest. So I know Michael didn't do that. Cause my, if they'd have said Michael gave him some Cavassier or Hennessy, I was like, the nigga did it. He did it. He's guilty. But I love Michael Jackson to death, man. He's the greatest entertainer to ever do this thing. But I was watching CNN when he died. I was raised by old school black people. When somebody died, that's the end of their chapter. We don't say nothing else bad about them. CNN was disrespecting the legacy of Michael Jackson. They said, at the time of his death, Michael Jackson was only 135 pounds and he had tracks in his arms from doing drugs. Okay, if he on drugs, he's supposed to have tracks in his arm. I'm cool with that. But what Michael did y'all see that was ever more than 135 pounds? Y'all know Michael was poor as hell? Y'all know he was at Big Mama house on Sunday, she'd give him some extra Kool-Aid and butter beans, you know what I'm saying? He was poor, he was skinny. Then he had a nerd to say, Michael Jackson bleached his skin because he didn't want to be black. He was over $400 million in debt. Being in debt is the blackest thing that you can do. If Michael Jackson made the $400 million, $400 million that's an accomplishment. We should be celebrating that. Because I got a cousin that wrote a bad check at Walmart for two flat screens for $600. They locked this bitch up the next Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Mike made it to $400 million. That's an accomplishment, man. And I love the stuff Michael Jackson used to do. He used to pull off some amazing stuff just because he was Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson went into Egypt, poked his chest out, stole Eddie Murphy, old lady, before his movie started going bad and he had baby with a spice girl. You believe that? He spun around turning the gold dust left up out of there. Michael Jackson was a bad mother. And let me tell you what else Michael Jackson did. They were questioning Mike's sexuality. Mike came out with a bad album. The first words in bad was, your bud is mine. <laughs> Gonna tell you right. They can't question your sexuality, sir. You say your bud is mine to get away with it, sir. I'm telling y'all, Michael Jackson was a bad mofo. I'm telling y'all, sir, could you get this lady right here? Y'all together? Could you straight up... Shut down the whole street. Put on some penny loafers, some white karate socks, karate belt, black high water, electric blue shirt, white t-shirt, and tell her the way you feel. Nah, so you couldn't pull that off, sir, because you're not Michael Jackson. Y'all give it up one more time for Michael Joseph Jackson. Y'all all right? Everybody having a good time? Somebody say yeah. yeah. Oh, y'all my kind of people. Let me see how black y'all are. We're going to do a black test. If you black and you proud, make some noise. Yeah. We're finna have a clan rally right now. Because I remember a time when we didn't worry about color as much as we worry about color now. We watched some great television shows. We would listen to some great music. And we didn't worry about color at the time, did we? How many people back in the day watched different strokes? Now the world don't move to the feet with just one stroke. Do you think a white man would really adopt a midget and another little nigga and move him in a penthouse with his fine daughter? We didn't worry about that, did we? We watched the television because it was good television show. We watched stuff like Fantasy Island. How many of y'all remember Fantasy Island? Yeah. Oh, they had more mermaids on that show than black people, didn't they? You had a little Filipino man that said, Boss, they're playing, they're playing, they're playing. Show didn't make no sense. We watched it. It was a great television show, right? Yeah, we in South Carolina, right? Are we in South Carolina? Yeah. How many of y'all black ass watch The Dukes of House? It's a good old boys, never meaning no harm. These all you ever saw been in trouble with the law since the day they were born. Making a way, the only way they know how. Yeehaw. We watched that show, didn't we? They had, they had a deputy sheriff. They had a bar. They had a, all this stuff. Uncle Jesse. They had Luke and Duke. Everybody. No black people on this show. They had court and a judge. No black people. You know what I'm saying? We didn't protest, we didn't stand out, we put our fists up, didn't we? And on top of this car that we love so much, matter of fact, how did they drive it generally? Nobody ever had keys to it. They just jumped, did it, crunk it up, jumped over stuff. It was amazing, wasn't it? See what I'm saying? On top of this car was Confederate flag. None of us boycotted that show, didn't we? So take color out of everything y'all do, man. I'm gonna prove to y'all. Y'all not as black as y'all think y'all are. 
Because see, now we can just log on to anything we want to, watch any video from any era we want to. When we was coming up, we had video shows that showed 10 videos at a time. And we had to wait till the end of the week to watch some corny ass show called Night Tracks that came on at night. We knew Michael Jackson was number one, but to get to Michael Jackson, we had to watch nine pop, rock, and country videos. We didn't just watch them. We love them to death. I'm going to take y'all back down memory lane and show y'all not as black as y'all think y'all are. Go that way with me. I want a man with a... Come on, y'all. I want a lover with an... Look at y'all crackers. <laughs> we watch nine pop, rock, and country videos. How many of y'all remember this one right here? I can feel it calling in the air tonight. Hold on. Cause I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Sing it, y'all. What was he holding on for? Nobody knew. See what I'm saying? I'm finna give y'all. Y'all watch nine pop, rock, and country videos. You know what I'm saying? How many of y'all remember? We're not gonna take that. No, we ain't gonna take that. We're not gonna take that anymore. See, y'all ain't the black as I thought I was, are you? All right. Come on now. Everybody, I was 1987. I was at Hesford Middle School back in Augusta, Georgia, Richmond County. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. Mike was on the Wheaties box. No. I had on Levi jeans that coat coat and shirt. Stonewash Levi jeans. I had on some high top Reebok classics rolled up to the top. I didn't want to be like Mike. I wanted to be like this guy right here. Shot to the high and you're too blame, darling. Sing it now. Play my part and you play your game, darling. You give love a Yo, I told y'all y'all wasn't as black as y'all thought y'all would look at you. It kept going up until the modern era. It kept going. We got up there watching shows like TRL. We still was fascinated with white music. We didn't want to say that. But everybody wanted to put on that white suit, get in the mirror, take them famous steps and say, You are my fire, the one desire, believe. When I say I want it that Then a boy band with a boy Tell me why it ain't nothing but a party Tell me why We didn't quit there Because we had to see who was number one Was it going to be NSYNC or was it going to be Backstreet Boys No it wasn't, shut up I know that I can't take no more It ain't no lie I I wanna see you out that door, baby. That was my jam. Five angry white boys from Florida hitting it like this. I loved it to death, man. I'm gonna tell y'all one more joke and I'm gonna get out of here. Y'all are rock in South Carolina. Oh man, this is nice here, man. Y'all make sure y'all give it up for my man Stevie Jones at 95.7, 95.3, 95.7. .3. .3. Which one? 95.3. Okay, now that's somebody else. Huh? Cheap. You got medicine in them glasses. I knew you was gonna say something. I like you. You all right with me? Got all them bangles on and stuff. You cute. What's your name, baby? Anita. Anita. Y'all get her for Anita. No, she got about thirteen grandkids. Anita. I don't even have a kid. You ain't had no kids. So nobody thought enough of you to get you pregnant. <laughs> Y'all pray for Anita. She needs a man pretty bad. You done ran them off, ran up a whole bunch of dudes like you. Because you run your mouth too much, you talk too much. But let me thank you, baby. I appreciate you for being here. I love you, my sister. I love you. I'm going to leave y'all with this last joke and I'm going to get out of here, man. Like I talked about before, kids say they're supposed to have stuff they ain't supposed to have. My kids, they make me sick. My son told me, he said, Daddy, I need some socks. Like before I told you, I'd be at Walmart four times a week. I got him some nice crew socks. Starter socks, regular black crew socks. Ten pair for eight eighty eight. I was so sure about this one that I hit it with the no-look pad. Here you go, son. Boom. I look back. My son was rubbing his forehead. I said, what's wrong, son? He said, Daddy, them ain't the kind of socks I, I wear. So I said, my wife said we got to start talking to him. 
Cause I used, I'm old school, I used to punch him in the chest, get my way and move on. So I was gonna be diplomatic this day. I said, okay son, let's go to where you get your socks from. I knew we was in trouble. Cause we pulled up at the Augusta Mall. Now me, I shop at discount stores. I don't know, I don't go to the mall no more. I go to Berlin, TJ Ross, Mac. That's a true story. I'm like, why are we here? So we walked inside the mall to this place called Foot Locker. It's full of evil. Everybody just like referees and no whistles. <laughs> my son saw one of his classmates in there. Now my son has an epidemic condition that's going around where they don't comb their hair. They rub it with a piece of Brillo pad in a circle and they get up and they walk off and it's nappy and dry and it's hard. Uh, so my, uh, his friend had the same condition. They gave him to the dap. They had to. Sparks came up. I had to duck behind his t-shirts and stuff. It was a terrible moment. So my son came back with a pair of socks. It was nice. Socks had Steph Curry on the cover. Y'all know Steph Curry, right? Little light skin, but you threes all the time. And Steph Curry was really focused on the socks. He was going up for a three point. I could see the spalling on the ball. I could see his hazel eyes, his brown eyebrows, his light brown tape line. I could see the mouthpiece in his mouth. Number 30 on the front and the back of his jersey. Curry, under armor on his socks and on his shoes. These socks are so digital, y'all. I looked on the back of the sock. I could see his family in the stands. I could see his mom and his daddy. His wife and his little baby right there were standing on the socks. I said, this is a bad pair of socks. So my son proceeded to hand me the socks. And the socks had a price tag on the right corner of me. It said it was $30. I moved my hand back and stepped her and his family hit the floor. <laughs> At that point, I told one of my sons, I said, hey, son, they made the kind of socks that I buy. So he looked at me, he picked out another pair. That was a Nike Elite socks. It was nice. One for the right foot, one for the left foot. Cushioning everything. Real nice. Had just do it up the back of the sock. I said, woo, that's a bad pair of socks. When they had those to me, they happened to be $24. So at that time, God works in mysterious ways. Y'all believe that, South Carolina? God works in mysterious ways. I lost control of my own body. The spirit of Martin Luther King took over my body at that time. I said, son, if you look over there across the store, there's a cash register. I don't think I'm going to make it there with you. What we have lying on the floor is fifty-four dollars worth of socks. That's enough for an entire month of straight talk cell phone service. A combo from a McDonald's with a big drink and big fries. I said, son, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, and he wasn't wearing no socks like this. I said, son, if you think you should wear these type of garments, I think you should make some elite grades at an elite institution. So that you can get an elite job, so that you can finance such sad things. I said, uh, free at last, free at last. If it wasn't for your mama, nigga, I'd still be punching your stupid ass. Hi, <laughs> right, y'all, my name is Civil Comedian Society. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. Thank y'all very much. All right, let's give it up for Savage, y'all. Savage. For those of you that's getting here, this is the Blues Doctor from 89.3 FM, Atlanta, Georgia. DJ, hit that track, man. Yeah. We're getting back to the blues, y'all. Got any blues lovers in the house?